Friday. This is Laurent, aka Away from Brussels in Belgium, for a special screencast on PluggingGuru.com and his YouTube channel. Um, as we have just updated our new product, Away Volume 1, which consists of 150 patches of ours. Well, basically mine and a few others from John. Uh, same goes for Maltese, 26 mind-blowing Maltese, as, as you can see here. Uh, effect racks of mine, plus the effect racks from Plugin Guru that you can find on each other product. And they're awesome, I use them all the time. First of all, uh, so the library got released uh, a little bit over a week ago, and first of all, thank you so much for your tremendous support, for your user feedback, and for the purchases, of course. Well, thank you so much because we had, personally, I had never expected uh, such reaction uh, on, on, on this new library. So thank you, thank you, and once again, thank you. So what we've done here with the V101 update is really simple. Um, I have updated the patch count to a, a little bit more than 150, we are at 155, as far as I remember. And on top of that, we ha we have added a tremendous amount of new multis or new versions of existing multis. And there is a reason for that. So first of all, I would like to um, to talk about uh, the updates that, that I did on the kick drums because I... Um, we got a uh, well early user feedback from uh, from Windows guys having trouble with the kicks uh, on which you had the waist shaping, and um, there is a reason for that problem to occur with Omnisphere Two on Windows. That's because the wave shaping feature works uh, slightly differently than the one on the uh, on the Mac version. I wasn't aware of that, so sorry. And here is the the fix. I did it. So it's really simple, in fact. A wave shaping feature here was put, as you can see here, it's still in that in, in that position here. So I put it back to ask on each single pat, uh, kick drum patch that, uh, that, was, that was making use of that feature. So it's gonna work as smooth as that. This is what you should hear whether you're working on Mac or PC, it doesn't matter. This is what you should hear. Okay, so um, I did save patch quick for each single patch. As you can see here, same with this one. It, the audio path was an amp and I put it back on ask. There is apparently no difference in sound. So um, I, I was just, trying to use the, the wave shaping feature more than the audio path well because it's not it's not really relevant in 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 this case and um so i i updated uh, i updated all the patches uh separately the patches and also the multis that were making use of um the kick drums those kick drums normally this is what you should hear now so this is a good addition and um, this is it for for the patch for for the patch updates. So secondly, um, we've updated the multis, and um, as many of you uh, well uh, came with feedback on how it was working on their on their computer. First, let me tell you something about multis. Well, a multi channel synthesizer such as Omnisphere demands a lot of CPU power. This is no secret, and there is there is a reason for that. Well, there is something that makes it even worse, and it it stands for every single software synthesizer that makes use of multi-timbral modes, uh, such as a Native Instruments Contact, for example, among others. Um, so, the fact the problem is that when you whenever you use it, whenever you instantiate Omnisphere into your uh, DAW software, which is here, Logic Pro. Um, fact is, whatever you're gonna make here into your multi will run on a single core of your CPU. You can have two core, four cores, eight cores, it doesn't matter. It will rely on a single core per instance. So, for example, let's say I want to 
sorry about that. Uh, let's say I want to um, I want to run this one. You're gonna see the CPU uh, meter here. It will jump up. <laughs> And this is absolutely normal that it jumps up like this. That's because these eight sounds playing at the same time are relying on a single core of your, of your computer. So that makes everything a little bit difficult for your, for your computer to handle. And some multis, some multis are a little bit too CPU hungry, apparently. Well, they were because I addressed some of them. And on top of that, just uh, because uh, we want to make sure that you enjoy the experience fully. Um, to those of you having trouble, we made light versions of each of those multis. Well, most of them. Um, this one got a light version. So, as you can see, we, we you have a reduced ambient uh, timer is usage. really CPU hungry. As you can see. Look at this. The CPU hit is really, really big. So the light version is slightly different, use, uses less polyphony and effects, but that way also less CPU. Let's compare. For some of you, it's much better. By the way, this computer is a MacBook Pro from two years ago. So um, this is why it, it got me a little bit, well, you know, uh, head scratching um, because I didn't know what, what, the problem, uh, what the problem was. But this, this might be the explanation. So if you're afraid that you need more CPU power for the rest of your project, and if you work that way, which isn't my, way, my, my workflow, but if you work that way that you keep everything, you know, every software synthesizer open, use the light versions and uh, if you want to use the, the full versions you can uh, eventually bounce them well uh, render them to audio it's going to be probably better for you so um ambient timers light as you can hear there is practically no uh audio difference um the reverbs are better quality in the in the full version but the live version sounds almost as good and um it comes, it, well, it comes with it. So you, you just need to instantiate it and that's it. Um, let's say uh, Belleville, um, no, let's say uh, Pro Step Man, for example. It was quite CPU hungry as well, as you can see. As you can see, it's quite CPU hungry, and I would use in the live version the CPU hit by approximately 10 to 20 percent. So you see, it's a little bit less CPU. Also, I made um, well, th there is that one, and this is a special one that I'm a brand new one that I made recently, and. Um, I should use the, the light version because it's really, really, really uh, heavy on CPU. And um, then we'll, we, we can compare with, with the full version because there, there is no big difference, uh, except that I'm using less parts. But the parts that are uh, important here are these Hollywood banger. You see those five patches here. This is what truly matters. They are into the patch version, well, into the patches uh, collection as well. Um, those Hollywood bangers were made out of noise oscillators only. And basically they emulate the, well, let's say the, the cinematic toms of, uh, well, of, of a Hollywood movie. Mud wheel yeah. is down, and when I lift the, the mud wheel, you, you're gonna hear the, the difference on, in um, in impact. It's it's amazing. Listen to this. Mud wheel up.
and this is just, well, <laughs> one finger and just noise waves and a few effects, especially uh, inner space, uh, I think, as far as I remember, yeah. Inner space uh, and uh, envelope filters on many of them. Uh, it was really fun to make, and so we you ha you've got all the patches here available separately with the uh, with the uh, corresponding ARP, and I made also uh, a heavy version uh, that 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 has that little bit more impact if you whenever you need it. And uh, let's try that. I'm not I'm not sure my my CPU is gonna is gonna be able to handle this, but you never know. Apparently it is. So you see, it's really he uh, heavy on CPU, but sometimes it's really worth it because it sounds big. This one sounds really, really, really big. Um, also, uh, I made some uh, latch uh, patches. Follow the white line is really, really cool. Let's have a listen to this one. Um, here. Okay, for some of the multis, I forgot mentioning for some of the latch multis, very important to, um, for perfect syncing, to have your sequencer, your DAO software, in this case Logic Pro, running. It's really important because this way everything is going to be in sync. As you can see, everything is in sync once you hit the play bar, uh, the space bar here in uh, in Logic Pro. Uh, so let me stop it. So um, this multi makes use of some of the drums that I made, the kick, the hats, and the snare, different patterns, especially for this multi. And I'm going to show you something here in the stack mode, which is really interesting. You see the. Um, the drums are in latch mode. That means that once you uh, once you hit the key, the corresponding key, well, it will start playing each uh, drum separately. So you have on C1, you have the kick. Then on the uh, C sharp one, you have the hats. Ah, uh, no, the snare. Sorry. And on D1, you have the hats. All playing in sync once you uh, you hit the space bar. So also worth mentioning the drums and everything else follow the tempo uh, of your uh, uh, the sunk position of your sequencer, which is really interesting when performing live. This is why I did those those multis uh, actually because I want I wanted to be compatible with the live setup uh, more and more. Um, so everything here is following sunk position in the ARP, as you can see. And uh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, so it's really uh, it's it's worth it was worth mentioning that. Um, so it's a good multi here uh, that makes use of the stack mode plus splits. So we have the basses here playing, and on the right hand you have uh, the legendary. 1080 pad, so it's uh, it's a good demonstration of the patches I made for the for this library. As you have drums, uh, BPM bases, and pads. So um, hope you will enjoy it. Um, Gasoid tank is another of those. I think. Let me check. Yep, another uh, another of those with a split uh, split keys for the drums on C1. C sharp one and D one. Ah, oh, that's a funny one, yeah. So you have kick, kick clap and hat here. And then on the uh, still on the left hand with the basses you have this. This is the don't FS in your face bass here. And then on the right hand you have 
um, power cords from, uh, well, the Krusty Crunches patches, uh, patch I made. From Brussels to Athens is really, really heavy on CPU too. Makes use uh, of, well, many pads uh, that I made plus the Evangelist lead. So basically it's, um, it's some kind of uh, pad, sp well, split pad, uh, multi, uh, reminiscent of Vangelis. You will, uh, you will hear it. It's Vangelis all the way. When I get to heaven is another of John's uh, Maltese and uh, yeah, it's it's a nice one. Let me show you here. Let me show you. Here we are. Left hand, you have the beats. I did uh, yesterday uh, because I realized that many of you are still using, you know, uh, drum kits and s stuff like that. So I made separate menus uh, featuring eight, uh, eight drums each. So you have here. From C1, or from C2 to G2, you have uh, different options, and you have two menus. And also the kicks. And also here, a second menu for the kicks. And then you have the snares and also the claps. There are there are, there will be by the time we, you you see this, there will be in the in the collection as well. Um, Desolation is on the way. There's another great multi. In this case, it makes use of CC1, which is the mod wheel, in order to uh, morph between pad sounds. And it's really, it's really cool to, to be able to do that. Let's get here. So here, there it is, ladies and gentlemen, this is version 1.01 of this uh, Airwave Collection Volume 1 for Atmosphere 2. Um, as stated before, 150 patches plus 5 now and tons of new multis adding to the 26 we've had already done, plus the uh, 186 effects. 26 of mine and 160 from John Skippy Lemkel. So I'm going to show you how to make, well, a basic kick drum of, um, of a sine wave into Omnisphere. Well, just the basics, because many of you might be wondering how, how it gets done normally. Well, th that's the way it works. So let's try with, a, uh, let's start with a sine wave here. It's going here. As you can see, um, it's pretty standard for now. 
the, the first thing you have to do is remove the analog, well, all the drifting that you, you could get. Also the phase, you put it back to zero just in case. And another basic thing is that you need to disable keyboard tracking. So whatever note you hit on the keyboard, it's gonna be the same note. And it's gonna be triggered by, well, the note will be set up by this, by this fader, which is the chorus tune. And let's say we wanna go a little bit lower here. This is really low, as you can hear. I hope you, you still can hear it. If you cannot, well, I guess you need headphones or something. It's because of your, uh, because of your speakers. But it's really important not to listen to, uh, through the through the laptop speakers, and uh, t take uh, headphones in order to to hear that what I'm doing here. So, if you can hear this, it's really a low sine wave. So there is another thing I'm gonna do right now. I just need a four on the floor kick, so I'm gonna do, do it right now, like this. And uh, I'm gonna start it. I'm gonna make the note long enough, as you can see here. Three sixteenths is, and, and repeating each fourth is, is enough. So, now we're gonna make it a little bit more interesting. First thing you need to do is, you see this start fade, you put it here. And there is a reason for that. That's because every single time you will hear the note off phase with this. You can hear the, the click coming. And when you hear, uh, when you when you use other start fade uh, options, it disappears. Just we'll have it with this one. Uh, also worth mentioning, if you want different clicks or harder clicks, you can also use other waveforms. And I uh, strongly suggest, for example, um, the virus sign. Can you hear this? The click is really apparent now. This is what we need. Secondly, we need something else. This is an envelope modulation one, for example, um, doing a default ADSR. And uh, from there, we need to unloop it and not, we don't need the sync function to be enabled. And uh, secondly, we are gonna make the mod wheel um, affect the course, uh, the course tune of your oscillator. So I take here the mod envelope one, uh, not the mod wheel, sorry about that, mod envelope one, of course, sorry. Uh, so, and you take uh, the oscillator pitch course. So this is the basic of uh, designing kick drums into, um, into Omnisphere. This is what you will you will get from here, and um, if you want other sounds, you can do this. If you want less depth, well, you could use that one. But I suggest this one as well, and then you can also sounds more like a 909. This one, and also um, you have to keep in mind that. It shouldn't be too long. And if it, if it ever feels a bit short, what you can do here is change the curve of your amp envelope. And make it shorter. As you can hear, this is a perfect example of a standard kick drum made with a software synthesizer. If you want, if you want it curvy, then it will sound like 808. And if you put it straight, it will sound like 909.
as you can hear. And here it is. And don't forget that the clicks, uh, the clicks are coming from this oscillator and the phase that I move here. So this is how it works. I took a virus sign, phase put to, let's say, 275, approximately, you, you can narrow it the way you want. And um, also the start fade should be set to no fade at all. So you know how to make, uh, well, a basic kick drum into uh, into atmosphere too. In future videos, I will uh, I will explain you how to make uh, bigger kick drums and everything else. But that that's for the future. Thanks a lot for watching. So uh, keep an eye on the, this library, Airway Volume One, a collection of Omnisphere Two patches and multis. Thanks a lot for your support, and uh, well, see you later on this channel. Bye. Thank you.